How do you put up a really, really heavy mirror onto a wall without it falling off? How do you select the right fastenings? How do you get them into the wall? And how do you avoid making a complete mess of the whole job? And how do you vary that depending on the wall type, whether it's brick or drywall or something else? Watch on, and I'm gonna answer all of those questions, including dispelling a lot of the myths on how to hang heavy mirrors. There are some bad, bad advice out there. So watch on, and hopefully this will help. Okay, so here we have the mirror, um, and as I understand it, the rear of these mirrors often looks very similar. They've got these kind of, these type fixings here. So obviously the first thing you've got to do is mark it out, right? You've got to measure the size of your mirror. You've got to measure the size of where you're going to mount it. Uh, and then you've got to get yourself comfortable with where it's going to go. For mine, it's going to go, bottom's going to go here. Uh, and then the uh, you can see the, the fixings I've marked out just there. Now, it is critical to get those fixing dimensions spot on. And what I recommend you do is for the height, measure from the bottom, to the very peak of this. Now, the fixing itself won't actually sit in the very tip, it'll actually sit slightly back because of the um, the way that there's this circumference here, this, this curvature. Um, however, it will be consistent across both. And for consistency of measurement, I recommend just going to the point rather than kind of guesstimating. Otherwise, you could have a non-level uh, mirror. Uh, and also, I've used my six foot level um, over here um, in order to make sure that all of this is properly properly marked out. So I don't think marking out needs a lot of explanation, obviously, but that's just that little tip there on the on the how to how to measure the fixings up. And the other one on the other side is just, just there, so it's, it's all ready to go. It's a beautiful mirror, um, it's very, very heavy. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get going. Okay, now the area most people make the mistake is on the fixing. Okay. Now this is a solid wall, this is a brick wall. A little bit a little bit hollow there, I don't know what's happening there, but this is, you can hear, that's a, that's a real solid wall, right? If it was a plasterboard wall, I would not be using these fixings, okay? There are specialist fixings you can use for plasterboards. I'm going to put a screenshot of one that I recommend on now. What's great about the one I'm recommending here is it's got a section which goes straight into the actual brick behind the plasterboard. The, the thing with the plasterboard board is you've got this very fragile plasterboard on the front, then you've got a slight air gap where it's there's just a gap where the glue is that's holding it on. It's called dot and dab. And then there's the actual brickwork behind it. That's actually got the structural integrity and strength to hold your mirror. So the fixing has actually got a strong section to go into the brickwork and block work. And then it's got another section to go through the, the sort of the air gap and then the actual plasterboard to avoid damaging the plasterboard, avoid putting any load on the plasterboard but still maintaining the integrity of the whole structure. So personally, I would say these are the only fixings that you could use safely for a large, heavy mirror, okay? Um, I've seen other videos on YouTube, some of them with hundreds of thousands of views, and they recommend using um, kind of butterfly type fixings where it basically it's you put it in and then it's as you screw it in, it, it, it forms up and it gets larger and larger and then it grips onto the plasterboard. That means you're putting the whole weight of that mirror on some very flimsy plasterboard. That is a recipe for disaster. The other thing that I'm gonna do with these, and it does say on the manufacturer's recommendation here, is I'm gonna put them in at a 45 degree angle or as close as I can get to it. Um, it's gonna be tough getting 45 degrees with my drill, but as close as I can get to it, so that if it starts to get pulled out of the wall, it won't, it won't get pulled out of the wall because of the angle, right? If you put it in like that, it's much easier for the weight of the of the mirror to, to pull it down, okay? Um, with the plasterboard fixings that I recommend, you can only put them in horizontally, okay? They, they will only work that way. However, they are so strong and they're going so deep, if you get the right ones, that you'll be absolutely fine, honestly. Um, and honestly, it's only belt and braces, putting it in at, at, at an angle. So um, that's the other thing to consider when you're mounting it is, and this is this did change actually where we, where we decided to put it, is it's gonna, the bottom of the mirror is gonna go here, but I've got to get my drill into both of those fixing points there and I've got to mount it at a at an angle so the back of that drill is going to fail on the ceiling even though we've got high ceilings here so that's another consideration as well and the other one was you know if we put anything on the mantelpiece is it going to go up against the mirror or is it, um, is it you know is it going to fail on the mirror we don't really want that either so I've got an SDS drill if you're watching this you probably know what that is but if you don't um, go YouTube that honestly you need an SDS drill to drill the holes for this job period okay uh, right now let's get cracking I'm going to start drilling some holes and we'll knock these into the ball and then you'll see how it all hangs together literally
so I'm going in about that deep, so it's pretty much spot on. So it's one of the little lips sticking out to actually hang the mirror on. So, so that's absolutely fine. Right, so now when you're knocking them in, if you've got good bolts, I haven't got a very good one here, there'll be a little extra bit on the top of the bolt, which allows you to hammer it in without damaging the thread. Because I haven't got that, I'm going to take the nut right up to the top, just so the thread's just sitting just uh, on just below flush. I'm not going to hammer it in that way, so I won't damage the thread. Okay. So I'm just going to stop for a minute. The um, quality of these fixings is really poor. This piece of um, wire has just come away, and this is all. I'm trying to put it back together. It won't. It won't go. Um, I'm, I'm going to get myself some better quality fixings. Come on, be. Just give it a gentle tap. Gonna need the washer on it, I wasn't sure about that. The washer on. Right, I'm just gonna get the spell it and we'll tighten it up. And the challenge we've got is, I mean that is rock solid, but the challenge we've got is the more I turn that in, the more it's gonna stick out. And probably up to that point it's probably alright, but much more and it's not gonna work, obviously. So it doesn't work, I'm going to have to get an angle grinder to cut the top off it, which is not going to be. Okay, so that's the problem. It's uh, it sheared this top bit off. I can see, look at it in there, it's sheared it off. So uh, this is going to be not tightening up, it's not going to be working, this will all be flapping about inside. So what I'm going to have to do, um, I think I did this last time as well, I'm going to have to pull the whole thing. Uh, I'll get them both in, I'll get them both in, make sure the measurements are spot on so I know it will definitely hang. I might even do a trial hang just to make sure. Uh, and then I'm going to take them out again and I'm going to set them in resin and that way uh, we won't have any nuts showing off here it can stick out as much as I want it to and it will be set rock solid okay so there'll be no there'll be no problem the only challenge will be when we come to take them out again um, the only way to get them out of sort of resin is to use an angle grinder cut into the plaster cut them off and then fill up the plaster and, uh, and make it after the set okay so the first thing I've got to make sure is that the Measurement is precisely right, so I'm going to measure from where I'm going to cut in here. Yeah, it's in the middle of there, which is 1125, and I'm sure if I remember that's correct. Let's double check on it. 1125 on the nose, yes, that's spot on, absolutely spot on. I've, I've drilled that perfectly. Spot the deliberate mistakes, I'm not wearing eye protection, I should be. Right it's starting to move the angle too quickly, so you know, I have to just correct, go horizontal again for a bit, get a decent purchase and then start moving the angle up. It's fine, and those screwed threads are just because I've um, Going right through to the cavity on this one, the screw threads are going to fall right in into the cavity if I'm not careful when I put the uh, the resin in. So I'm just going to get some paper to just stuff in the crack there. Quite a good and even spacing all the way around roughly. Yeah, that's spot on. So it's important to keep remeasuring, remeasuring. That's just so critical, otherwise you get a horrible surprise at the end. So what we'll do now is we'll give it another blow out and then we'll get the resin in and get it set. Okay, so you do have to be really thorough with cleaning these holes out. <coughs> you get with the resin kit, you get these uh, these little cleaners. Oh, they're a bit small, there's a whole load of them coming out. There we go. At 20 degrees, this will only remain as gel for about five to ten minutes. This has been in here quite a while.
leave that for an hour to set and then that'll be good to use. So that is how you put up a uh, very heavy mirror on a wall um, which is a brick wall with plaster um, and obviously in the description I'll just put the slight changes for uh, drywall walls um, you did a slight different product with a metal sleeve which will go deep into the block or the brickwork but uh, yeah that's a good job. Hope that helps. Do please leave a comment below if you've got any questions or any constructive feedback. Constructive feedback respectfully delivered is a gift. I truly believe that and I'm very, very grateful for all of your comments. Also, please consider subscribing and be sure to press the bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Take care.